Faraday's law explored the connection between electricity and magnetism. Faraday's law states that a changing magnetic flux through a circuit produces an induced EMF and hence current. Faraday's law is given by the induced EMF E is equal to minus d phi by dt where dt is the time interval over which the change in flux is d phi. Lenz's rule explains that what is the direction of the induced current. So, the negative sign over here is explained by Lenz's rule. So, this is Faraday's law and Lenz's law explains the negative sign. Now, you might be wondering that according to Faraday's law, a changing magnetic flux induces an EMF. Now, if you notice Faraday's law or Lenz's law does not explain the reason for an induced EMF. What is the origin of the induced EMF? To understand the origin of the induced EMF, let us take a look at an experiment. In this experiment, we have a straight conductor. This is the straight conductor shown in red over here that moves across a U-shaped conductor and a uniform magnetic field is present which is directed into the plane of the page. So, we can show that magnetic field with crosses since it is directed into the plane of the page. Had it been out of the plane of the page, then we would have drawn dots instead of crosses. Let's say the conductor AB moves to the right in a magnetic field B over here. Then the free charges within the conductor experience a force F equal to Q V cross B. This shows that a positive charge Q, say I draw a positive charge Q within the conductor. A positive charge Q within the conductor experiences an upward force from B to A. It experiences a force in this direction and a negative charge within the conductor would experience a force in the downward direction from A to B. Now, to find the direction of this force, we have used the cross product rule of vectors. So, just to understand that, first you point your fingers towards the V vector. V is in this direction. So, you point your fingers in this direction and then you curl them towards the B vector. In that case, your thumb points upwards. See, I will just repeat this. First, keep the palm of your hand flat. Point your fingers straight in this direction, in the direction of the B vector. So, initially, the first vector, we first point our fingers towards the first vector. Then, curl your hand towards the, curl your fingers towards the second vector which is the B vector and which is into the page. Now, as you do this, your thumb points in this upward direction. Hence, the direction of the force vector is upwards. And this means that a positive charge will move upward within the rod. With a similar explanation, since a negative charge would have a would have a negative sign it will experience a force in the opposite direction and a negative charge will move in the downward direction see actually if you want you can also use unit vectors to find this direction let us assume that this we we'll look at the x y and z direction let us take this as the x direction this as the y direction 
and this would be the z direction which is out of the plane of the page this is the z direction now over here in the example that we've taken the v vector is along the y direction which would be along a unit vector j and the b vector is into the plane of the page which would be the negative z direction so we can take that as minus k vector now if you recall the rules of vector cross product j vector cross k vector would be i vector and we also have a negative sign over here so we have negative i vector and negative i vector would mean in a direction opposite to this direction so that would be in this direction and that is how the positive charge has moved note that an excess of positive charge accumulates at end a and an excess of negative charge accumulates at end b this emf will produce a current that will flow in this direction from the positive to negative direction b now you might be wondering if this charge accum accumulation will continue indefinitely i mean the charges will keep separating as the conductor ab is moved no it will not this accumulated charge now creates an electric field within the moving conductor so since we have a positive charge at this end and a negative charge at this end you can see that this field is in the downward direction once again if you label this the same as that of the moving red conductor the electric field is from a to b initially the positive charge within the conductor a positive charge within the conductor experienced a force due to the magnetic field in the upward direction and this force was given by q v cross b now the force due to the electric field is in the downward direction and this force is given by f equals q times e charge separation within the conductor will stop once the downward electric force exactly cancels the upward magnetic force qvb which means that qe becomes equal to q v cross b so we can just write this as qe is equal to q v cross b note that instead of v cross b here i have written this as vb since the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field was 90 degrees so which would be sin 90 and sin 90 is 1 so once these two forces become equal there is no further charge separation or charge accumulation will not take place any more at this point let us estimate the induced emf in the conductor ab we can write the magnitude of the potential difference between the two ends of the rod as e the electric field times d the distance between the charges which in this case is l the length of this conductor this distance is l so the potential difference v is equal to e times l and we can write e from this equation over here e is equal to vb so we get v velocity times magnetic field times l the length of the conductor hence the induced emf will also be v b l now this emf is called the motional electromotive force and note that this is not a different type of emf this is the same emf that was described in faraday's laws 
next we look at an alternative way to explain let me just write this we are looking at an alternative way to explain the motional emf or the emf produced by this moving conductor see as the conductor ab moves over the u shaped conductor that is placed in a uniform magnetic field b directed downwards into the page we can use faraday's law and lenz's law to find the induced emf now faraday's law is e is equal to minus d phi by dt so over here what is phi phi is the flux flux is integral b dot da since the magnetic field b is constant this can be written as b times a which over here becomes b times l into x l is the length ab and x is this distance this distance is x as the conductor ab moves x keeps changing with time which means that the enclosed area would change say this conductor ab has moved to this position earlier the in, this was the enclosed area now when the conductor moves to this further position now this becomes the enclosed area so the enclosed area has increased as the conductor keeps moving the enclosed area keeps changing the induced emf is i'm we're just looking at the magnitude so we haven't put a negative sign is d phi by dt which would be the differentiation with respect to time of b l x b and l are constant as the conductor moves over here b is not changing and neither is l changing but x changes with time so we can write e as b times l times dx over dt and dx over dt will be v that will be the velocity with which the conductor ab moves so this becomes equal to b l v note that here we had dropped the minus sign the negative sign because we are we were looking at the magnitude of the induced emf now once again this emf is referred to as the motional emf as it is produced by the movement of the conducting rod